Um, Geshe Chakawa in Seven Point Mind Training really does recommend do it for yourself first and then gradually expand the radius of who you're giving and taking for. Um, especially if you're working in a care profession or a healing profession. Um, if you can make some peace with what's going on with you psychologically and physically, and then you're entering into the space with someone else and they're suffering, it's easier to be present um, or not triggered. So just sit feeling the weight of your body. Feeling what is comfortable in your body and what is uncomfortable in your body as well. And then think of what is uncomfortable and what is comfortable as dreamlike. If I were experiencing this in a dream, and then I saw myself as the dreamer, if I became lucid in my dream, would I worry about it? Want more of this or less of that with such fixation? Or would I release into a curious observer? Detached, but still engaged. Aware, but not worried. And then you do Tonglen with that awareness for yourself. And think of your physical suffering and discomfort, even if it's just mild fatigue, and decide that it's voluntary and give it to your self cherishing thought. Like lifting weights to make yourself stronger. Imagine taking that current suffering and making it voluntary. But you give it back to where it came from, the self-cherishing thought. A couple in-breaths of this. And then shift to the out breath and to the awareness of what is comfortable in your body. Maybe soft fabrics on your skin, comfortable cushion that you sit on, joints that are feeling comfortable, organs that are running smoothly. And think all of this is the result of positive states of mind, ripening as happiness and well being. And all these positive states of mind were either directly or indirectly from sentient beings. Practicing patience and generosity with them, etc. And so this happiness came from cherishing others. Give it back to others. And imagine sending this comfort on the out breath. Releasing it. Letting go of ownership or possessiveness.
just focused on the out breath, giving your physical comfort. And think from taking the suffering, your self-cherishing is dissolving. And from giving, your cherishing others has increased. And the happiness and comfort you sent out comes back to you anyway, absorbing in through your pores. but now free from attachment and grasping. And then you can relax your attention. So that's just a nice little short giving and taking for yourself with the body. You can do a nice short giving and taking with yourself with the mind. Yeah, so it's just something to experiment with. And um, so we'll have like a 15 minute break and then we'll have the last session, which is um, some of the, the fun kind of like humorous points of the mind training practice. So um, 15 minutes. And uh, again, you can write any questions in the chat and I'll um, bring them up at the top. If you've thought about the wisdom realizing emptiness and the way everything is illusory, then sending and taking should be practiced alternately. You should begin by taking from yourself. These two should ride on the breath. This is the instruction for Tonglen practice, for giving and taking practice, which is um, often just an invitation for fundamentalism because people think too literally. But the thing is, if you let go of literally, sometimes literally can happen, right? So, okay, so you're in front of your dear friend who's just been diagnosed with cancer and they have all sorts of stress and emotion about their diagnosis and you're doing Tonglen for them as they tell you about it. You know, you're breathing in their suffering, you're giving it to your self-cherishing thought, you're sending out your happiness, connecting with Bodhicitta. Just in your head, just on your breath, quietly while they're in front of you. What can happen is that you become so oriented towards them and so not triggered or stressed by your own pain of the situation or your own need to fix the situation that you relax and create an atmosphere which is a powerful condition for them to relax. If they are deeply relaxed, that becomes a powerful healing condition for their body. And if they have the karma for it and the genetics for it and the physiology for it, their cancer might actually shrink because of a deep stress relief and a deep soothing. And so it's as if you gave them that, but not in as direct a way as your meditation is doing. You know, your meditation is saying, literally, give me your cancer, give me the stress of it, give it to me, send it to my self-cherishing, take all my happiness, everything good I've ever done, may you have all of it, direct and literal. But you're remembering with emptiness that the gateway to emptiness is remembering dependent arising, right? The gateway to remembering emptiness is seeing that everything is empty because it relies upon causes and conditions, parts and context the basis of imputation, the mind labeling. It relies on so many different things. That's why it's empty. If it weren't empty, it wouldn't need all the layers of dependent arising. Yeah, so, you know, so by doing Tonglen, remembering emptiness in the background, it's still very simple and direct, but it can have this effect on them where it actually is a powerful condition for their healing. But you didn't breathe in their sickness, <laughs> like, no more cancer, right? but people can get too literal about it because occasionally it has a literal result. So you're not the cause, you're the condition, but conditions are hugely significant. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Yeah, gently, gently. So it's just living in this balance of cause and effect exist and everything is empty of inherent existence. Yeah. Good and bad lead to happiness and suffering. And there are, things are only good in a certain context from a certain perspective, merely labeled by the mind. Bad is only existing in a certain context, merely labeled by the mind. So it's there, but not there. And then you relax. Yeah. And if together with that, you can bring in just even a basic understanding of consciousness, right? Then, you know, if cause and effect exist and consciousness exists, then consciousness must also rely on cause and effect, right? Which means that mind has a substantial cause, a previous moment of mind. Nothing comes out of nowhere. We know that from the natural world, which means this consciousness has existed before this body and this consciousness will exist after this body. And so if this body goes to dust, oh well. <laughs> yeah, oh well. May it nourish the earth. May it feed some worms. Oh well. Change in clothes. Yeah. Gently, gently. So just, uh, you know, we sit with this, but remember that even though emptiness is such a Buddhist concept, that it exists in so many other frameworks, like, um, like I have this Einstein quote that I love, right? You guys probably know this quote. Um, so Einstein says, a human being is part of the whole, called by us, universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings, is something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to enhance all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. <laughs> 